Again, I'd like to say good evening and welcome to the 2014 Hamilton High School Hall of Fame induction ceremony. And my name is Curtis Moak, and uh, it's an honor to be able to be a master of anything. So uh, this is an incredible honor tonight to be with you. We want to get things started with an invocation, and that is going to be done by a former inductee, Jack Young. Dear God, we come before you thanking you for the many blessings you bestow upon us. We thank you for this nation in which we live, the many freedoms that we have that we take for granted. We thank you for this celebration tonight. We're going to celebrate these athletes that went through the Hamilton School System. We thank thee for the teachers that helped prepare them to go out into the world. We thank thee for both the men and the women and the entertainment that they gave us over the years as we watched them perform. Now, Lord, we just ask thee to bless this food to our bodies and us to thy service, for it is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jack, so much. One of the first things we're going to do is give away a couple of scholarships, and this is known as the Coach Sharp Scholarship Recipients. And who is going to do that for us tonight is Todd Grimm. So if he could come up at this time. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone tonight to the uh, Hamilton Athletic Hall of Fame Awards Dinner. And uh, first, first of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, all of our inductees this year. It's a, it's a great honor to be recognized by the, the school you graduated from. So congratulations to all of you. Uh, also, I'd like to thank uh, everyone uh, who was part of uh, giving me the opportunity to come to Hamilton and be the be named the athletic director, uh, I had never been in Hamilton before uh, this year. Uh, I've driven through a couple times, but uh, was was uh, didn't know a whole lot about Hamilton. But when I got the job, I had some friends who who were at who had been in Hamilton before, and they told me what a great place this is. And um, they, they did not give it justice. Hamilton is a great city, great town, and I'm very honored to, to be part of this great Big Blue tradition. So I just want to say thank you for that. Uh, I'm here to, to present, um, and very honored to do this, to present um, two very fine student athletes that were uh, Hamilton High School graduates last year who are attending college this year and they had the opportunity to eat dinner with them tonight and two great uh, young people back there so very honored to do that uh, a little bit about coach sharp i uh, didn't have the opportunity to know coach sharp obviously uh, i got to eat uh, dinner with his um, daughter and and son and wow if he uh, two great people, um, very nice, uh, so obviously he, he was a very special person. Uh, I got to talk to Mr. Young to give me uh, a little cheat sheet about Coach Sharp. Uh, Mr. Young played junior high basketball for Coach Sharp at Roosevelt Junior High. And uh, from everything that, that I've been told about Coach Sharp, he was truly a, uh, a genuine uh, leader and just truly cared about youth um, and educating the youth of, of Hamilton. Um, so, you know, I am very honored to, to be up here on behalf of the Sharp family to, to honor these two great student athletes that were graduates of Hamilton last year. So first, uh, we'd like to recognize the uh, 2014 recipient of the Coach Bill Sharp Award, Brooke Moran. Brooke is a freshman at Indiana University. Awesome. 
And next, we'd like to recognize the male recipient, A.J. Morrison. A.J. is a freshman, I believe, at Ohio Dominican. I'm sorry. <laughs> Heidelberg. He is a yeah, freshman at Heidelberg, and he is uh, on their football team. So congratulations to both of you. Again, thank you, Todd, for that presentation. We at this time want to uh, thank some people that have helped to make this night come to order. Um, and we get the opportunity this evening to induct these incredible athletes that have attended Hamilton High School. And uh, as a former inductee myself, I want you to know this is a great night and soak it up. Soak it in as much as possible. Um, we want to thank um, TV Hamilton. Steve and Sarah, thank you so much for your help in making this happen. Uh, Jostens for their watches that they're going to be giving the inductees tonight. Tom's Cigar Store, thank you so much. Uh, and also Clark's Sporting Goods. And we also obviously want to thank the committee members who you see here in your directory. Uh, at this time, any former inductees into the Hall of Fame, if you're actually present with us, we're going to ask you at this time to stand to your feet, and we want to give you a round of applause at this time as well. So any former inductees into the Hall of Fame, please stand up. Thank you so much. Well, we are ready to get started, and we're going to go through this, as you see in your directory, from left to right. Our first inductee is Robert Barnett, class of 1988. Bobby Barnett graduated from Hamilton High School in 1988. He earned four letters in football, three in baseball, and one letter in basketball. Barnett played football for one year for head coach Dale Robertson and three years under legendary coach John Pont. He set 17 school records for passing and punting. He was a four-year starter at quarterback and was the first freshman to take a varsity snap. He was named Big Blue's MVP, top offensive player, and a tri-captain in his senior year. He was also selected to play in the East-West all-star game. Barnett was a three-year starter in baseball, playing first base and pitching. He was named second team All-GMC as a first baseman and was second in home runs, right behind fellow Hall of Famer Mark Lewis. He earned a football scholarship to Western Kentucky University, and his coaches were Jack Harbaugh and Dave Robinson. He set the school record for a single season mark for highest pass completion percentage. He completed 18 consecutive passes as Western Kentucky University Hilltopper record. Barnett was also a holder for extra points and field goals and never missed a snap in his college career. To take this honor tonight and speak to us and accept his plaque is his sister, Vanetta Allen. I'm sorry. First of all, I would just like to say my brother is not able to be here due to health issues. But I know if he was here, the first thing he would say would be he would thank God. I want to thank the Hamilton High <laughs> Athletic Department for inducting him. Bobby was just an amazing person. Bobby lives in Bowling Green, Kentucky. He has a family down there. He has a wife named Teresa. He has a son named Patrick, and he has a daughter named Taylor. Taylor is his oldest, and she goes to the school Bobby went to, um, Bowling Green, Kentucky. And Patrick just graduated and got a full ride to his college playing football. Um, I know they're so very proud of their dad. And 
his son is following in his footsteps. Bobby has several siblings, I being one, I'm like the fourth, there's six of us, but it went Bob as a senior, my sister Arlita was a junior, my brother Sean was a sophomore, I was a freshman, my sister Nancy was an, an eighth grader, and my brother Opie was in seventh, so we were really tight. <laughs> so we looked up to Bobby as our dad. He made us proud. I wasn't going to speak until I got an email last, well, late last night, early this morning. The first thing I would like to say is when I stood out on the court last night and I listened to what you just read, I was like, wow, that's my brother. You know, I didn't, I knew he did a lot, but it was just like, wow, he did a real, real lot. And it just made me so proud. I just wish that he could have been there. I wish his family could have been there. And I thought, as I stood there, I thought I was all alone, but I wasn't. Little did I know, I'm gonna read this email to you. It said, Vanita, myself, and close to 20 other people that went to school with your brother and played sports from George Washington went to the game last night for his Hall of Fame induction. Please pass on to Bob and to his family that, they, that we were there to support him being elected. We were a very tight group in junior high and we think you very, we think very highly of him and we thank you for representing him. That was from Brian Seplog. He said, I would appreciate you sharing this with your brother. He said, I grew up with Bob. We played Little League together. We were all amazed, this is the funniest thing, when the high school bus would come down to George Washington to pick up my brother mm -hmm. to play varsity as a freshman. He was always a class act and he was a friend with anyone who extended their hand. I'll send you the names of everybody that was there because I wanted to recognize everybody who came. At this time, I'd like to thank Brian Seplock, Greg Terry, Stacy Ramsey Keep, Catherine White, Chris and Amy Hacker, Kevin Jordan, Dallas Barber, and Tanya Fannin. That means a lot to me. I mean, if I knew I, they were there, I would just hug them. Um, in closing, Bobby loved sports, and he loved his family, and he loved his friends. And most of all, he loved God. I ask that you all keep him in prayer. And I thank you so much for making this day special for him. That's my big brother. And I love him so much. And I'm so proud of him. Thank you. Great job. Incredible job. I'm sure you made your brother very proud and we would definitely keep him in our prayers to see that he comes back to health. Next is Dr. Jim Carr, class of 1944. Jim Carr graduated from Hamilton High School in 1944. He played football for the Big Blue under coach and fellow Hall of Famer Dana King. He was class president of his graduating class. After serving the United States Navy, he attended Miami University with a degree in business. He also graduated from the University of Notre Dame with a degree in chemistry and interned at the University of Cincinnati Medical School. He graduated from the Indiana University Medical Center where he received his MD in the field of urology. 
He established the Hamilton High School Athletic Foundation with benefited athletic programs and improvement to athletic facilities. He organized events to honor past championship teams and coaches. However, he insisted that only the Hamilton High School Athletic Director's signature appear on the mailing correspondence. In 1995, Carr established the Hamilton Extracurricular Advisory Team which was instrumental in establishing an attendance policy for interscholastic activities. He was a member of Hamilton Board of Education for 16 years. Dr. Carr is a quiet hero. Adhering to the philosophy of the old, old adage, do good and disappear. He was the team physician for Hamilton High School's football and basketball teams for over 20 years, but always made sure that there was an orthopedist on duty. He has organized the team physicians to administrate free to administer free physicals for the football team. Carr received the 1997 Ohio Outstanding Team Physician Award from the Ohio State Medical Association. Dr. Jim Carr. Well, I thank you very much. And I have to say that years ago when I uh, came back to Hamilton to practice, the athletic director asked me if I'd be team physician. I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I found out that uh, we had no orthopedic surgeons and, and involved, and so I thought, I got, a, I got a real job here. So I got a hold of Ev Jung and uh, Dr. Carl Palachek and Dr. Paul Ken Jimmy, and they became the real physicians uh, for Hamilton. And uh, Kevin Campbell, who uh, later joined me in my practice, uh, did, did likewise. So what we, what we did is uh, we made sure that there was an orthopedic surgeon uh, at every game. And uh, I just want to say that it's been a real joy for me uh, I've enjoyed it, and uh, we have great orthopedists here, and they've done a wonderful job uh, with with the program. And I uh, now I want to uh, introduce uh, my my daughter, who is a teacher at Hamlin High, has her bachelor's and master's degree at Miami, and her PhD at Cincinnati. Uh, my young son Dave, who's a graduate of Miami in physical education and was captain of Miami gymnastic team. And all the way from Connecticut, my son Jim Carr, who happens to be the uh, <coughs> head of the news editor of ESPN. In other words, he does the Monday night football is in charge of that for ESPN. That's my son Jim, and I'm glad that he's here. So uh, it's been a joy for me. I appreciate it, and uh, this is a great place to be. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jim Carr. We could all learn from the do good and disappear adage. Very nice. Next up is Michael Dooley, class of 1990. Mike graduated from Hamilton High School in 1990, a three-year letterman in football. He was coached by John Pont in his sophomore year and coached by fellow Hall of Famer Ed Minery for his junior and senior year. As a senior, he was voted most efficient offensive lineman and was named to the first team all GMC. Dooley also ran track for two years and basketball for one year. He earned a football scholarship to Ohio State University where he was a two-year letterman as an offensive lineman. In 1993, the Buckeyes record was its best since 1979, boasting a 10-1-1 record. OSU was co-champions with Wisconsin for the Big Ten Conference. The Buckeyes played in the 1993 Holiday Bowl in San Diego where they beat Brigham Young, 
with a score of 28 to 21. In 1994, they defeated Michigan, who, ending a six-year winless streak against the Wolverines. They also played in the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida, where they lost 24 to 17 to the Alabama Crimson Tide, a team that was only one point away from playing in the national championship game. Some of Dooley's teammates on the 1994 team was Luke Fickle, Eddie George, Joey Galloway, Terry Glenn, and Orlando Pace. Mike Dooley, class of 1990. I'd make, like to make uh, one correction to what, what was just read. I, n I never ran track, I, I, I threw. <laughs> About to say. Yeah, I, I, not 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 much of a runner, but I, I, I could throw some stuff. Uh, so I let, let's just needed to clear the air on that. Um, I guess, I guess I'll, I'll start off thanking my mom and my dad. Uh, they they were able to keep me straight uh, for for a little bit. I know it took a lot of effort on their part, and uh, you know I, I caused my mom to have a few gray hairs and. Uh, my dad to lose his hair. That's another thing is, is uh, kids out there, don't, don't make fun of your dad for going bald. <laughs> it, it's weird that uh, whatever I, <laughs> make, well, anyway. All right, uh, so uh, <laughs> as you can tell, I have this written down and memorized. Um, uh, ne next is I'd like to thank my coaches without them. Uh, with, without them guiding my way. Um, I don't know where I'd be. I don't know where I'd be without football. Football is a release for me. Um, I, I grew up uh, not really fitting in. I, I, I had a learning disability, and uh, sports was kind of my my way of fitting in. And uh, it was my release in life. Um, and uh, the, the coaches I had, Coach Murs, instrumental. Uh, I, I, I kind of used his uh, coaching philosophy. I've kind of transferred, carried it over. I, I love how how he's a, a tough but fair kind of a coach. And um, and uh, Coach Danger uh, shaped me as an as an offensive offensive lineman. I kind of I don't know exactly how good I was. I know I was big and uh, aggressive, and I and I love hitting people, you know. And uh, I don't I don't know what 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 a, what a you know. I didn't really un, I, looking back on it, I didn't really grasp the concept of being an offensive lineman. You kind of had to be more under control and I just wanted to hit people real hard and uh, that, that kind of got me in trouble sometimes and uh, well a lot of times uh, I, I was looking back on, on some of uh, the Hamilton High records and uh, I, we, I played with some really tough guys I mean some great guys and um, the, the thing that we're distinguished with are uh, the most shutouts in one year and the most penalties in one game. <laughs> oh man, the penalties. Uh, uh, me being a coach now, I, I don't understand. <laughs> oh man, I'd have killed us. Uh, I think it was against Milford. Uh, we had more yards and penalties than they had in offense. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I can't, I can't uh, forget Coach Mentory. Coach Mentory, um, he was able to sell me to Ohio State somehow. Uh, man, what a salesman! He uh, he would take me around to he, Coach Menery. I, um, the drastic turnaround that that he he made with our program, um, and uh, man, what what a worker! He uh, he he did a lot for the program, and, and uh, he uh, would always say, "You guys are laying the foundation," and uh, our team loved Big Blue, and uh, we we. Uh, we put it on the line, and you know, we, we our, our record might not have showed it, but uh, man, I, I, I see people um, now that we played against, and they're like, man, we hate it playing you guys. <laughs> so we we might have won, but man, we spent some time in the in the in the hot tub and the in the cold tub uh, after those games. Uh, and, and and oh wow, anybody else? Coach Smith, it's great seeing Coach Smith. He. He was, uh, even after I had to stop playing basketball my junior year, uh, he, he was always giving me answer, you know, he, 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 you know, he didn't ignore me after I couldn't play basketball. I had, I had knee problems and uh, the doctor made me choose football and basketball and 
um, the hardwood was awful, awful hard on a 280 pound guy, I guess. And uh, so I had to pick football. And um, he was always giving, giving me instrumental quotes and always giving me words of encouragement. And uh, I don't know if he remembers this, but a real, real tough time. Uh, my last game of my senior year, he was there for me to, to uh, kind of calm me down. And uh, I've, I've never forgotten that. Um, yeah, I, th I think that's everybody. Oh, my sisters, my sisters are here. Uh, they're, they're, what, what unconditional love my family has. You know, we're, uh, we're always there for each other. We, we, we might bicker and fight and whatnot, but uh, you know, when, when the, the, the fire hits, you know, they, they've always been there for me. And, uh, I, th those are, you know, the people that I, I definitely can count on in life, and, and I, I'm very grateful for the family I have, and uh, thank you very much. Mike, I really appreciate you clarifying that, because it just didn't feel right coming out. Great job. Next up is Eric Higgins, class of 1991. Eric graduated from Hamilton High School in 1991. He played two years of basketball under coach and fellow Hall of Famer John Smith. In his junior year, the Big Blue team was the district champions in basketball. Higgin was a three-year letterman in track and field and holds Hamilton High's record in a high jump of seven feet. He was a two-time state qualifier in high jump in 1990 and 91. He was a district champ in high jump in 1991 with a jump of seven feet. Higgin was named first team all GMC in his senior year. He attended Miami University and graduated in 1995 with a bachelor's degree in elementary education. While at Miami, he was a four-year letterman in track and field and was coached by Robert uh, Condon and Chuck Zodi. Higgins was a member of the 1993 Mid-American Conference Outdoor Team Championship. He won the 1993 MAC Outdoor Championship in the high jump. He won the Drake Relays Championship in the high jump with a seven foot three inch jump. He was named NCAA Indoor All-American High Jumper in 1993 and holds the indoor record at Miami at seven feet three inch and a quarter. In his senior year, Higgins was named Ford Mac Athlete of the Week in May of 1995. Eric Higgins, class of 1991. Wow. Congratulations, man. Thanks, Thanks. Okay. <laughs> that's better. Uh, yeah, that's a lot better, a lot better. First of all, uh, I would like to say it's, uh, it's good to be home again. Um, you know, going to the game last night, you know, I got to see some people who I haven't seen for a long time, talked to some people here tonight that I haven't seen for a while, and like I said, it, it's, it's just good to be home. Um, uh, I want to thank the uh, Hall of Fame committee uh, for selecting me this year to be part of this, uh, this class. You know, and recognizing the accomplishments that I that I that I've had, uh, you know, as I was sitting here reading this tonight and thinking about everything, you know, I was I was so busy doing all of those things that I never realized what I was actually accomplishing. And uh, at the end of the day, it ended up being quite a bit. And um, I like I said, just a thank you again for the uh, the opportunity to be part of this class uh, for the uh, committee selecting me. Uh, my family and friends, everybody who's here tonight, I appreciate you being here. Um, it, it's, it's good to see everybody and your love and support. Uh, I couldn't have done it without you. Um, and Michael and Mackenzie, my two kids, um, everything that daddy tells you is true. Now you got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. But, um, but, you know, I didn't do it alone, and, and tonight is not, it, it, it's not as much, to me, it's not about what's there on the paper as much as it is the people who helped me get there. 
And there are quite a few people who on that list who, who, who did help me get there. You know, as a kid, you know, I pick up any game I could pick up at Jefferson running around. And as a kid, I always run into this guy that my parents knew. And they tell me stories about Notre Dame and him playing in the NFL. And we wanted to be like Mike Townsend before Michael Jordan was Michael Jordan. You know, we wanted to be like Mike, you know. And, 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 and seeing him tonight, you know, he, um, you know, he still looks like he could play a little bit. <laughs> so uh, Mike was one of the first people who, who gave me some inspiration as a kid, uh, playing basketball with good friends of mine, Sean Maddox, uh, fellow Hall of Famer Mike Reese, uh, running, running up to Oxford, uh, doing pickup games up there, and you know, walk, walking the campus. I'm gonna tell on myself, Mama. Uh, we go uptown, High Street. We we um, we'll go around campus. Um, you know, go out to eat. Spend time on campus, I said, you know, I'm going to school up here. And I never thought that dream would come true until I got a call uh, from Bob Condon, uh, my, my, my jumps coach in college who, who's here tonight with me from Baltimore. And, uh, you know, he called me one day and he said, hey, my name is Bob Condon, assistant track coach at Miami. I think you could be uh, a Division I track athlete. And uh, he said, do you think so? I said, mm hmm. Yeah, I guess, and you know, and he said, you know, you, you, you were kind of hesitant, and you really didn't sound so sure, but I really think you could. And uh, Coach Conan was one of the first, uh, was one of the many people who who gave me an opportunity, uh, believed in me, and uh, and even when other people didn't, um, after I hurt my knee and had surgery. Uh, a lot of colleges backed off, but Coach Conan was still one of those guys who, who felt I could fit in and contribute in Miami. And um, I, I appreciate him uh, believing in me and, and, and supporting me throughout the time uh, that I was there. Uh, you know, there, there are four people, uh, really coaches in Hamilton, who, who were very instrumental in my development. And, uh, and, and part of and helping me develop something that I call family, okay? I'm not talking about brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles. I'm talking about fundamentals, attitude, manning up, having some intestinal fortitude, love, and you. And uh, uh, Coach Smith, uh, Coach Allen, uh, Larry Cox, uh, Skip Taylor, those guys, uh, very instrumental in, in my development as a as an athlete and as a player. Uh, coach Taylor, he was my eighth grade basketball coach. I never played an organized sport before in my life where I had to you know go through tryouts and he didn't cut me. I wasn't a basketball player. I was horrible, but he he saw something in me. And had he cut me, I don't know what I would have done. You know, I never I don't know which road I would have gone down. So. Uh, he, was, he was one of the first people who believed in me. And then I had Coach Allen, who was my freshman basketball coach. Uh, just the, the, the growth I had there and the, the relationship we've had over the years, you know, all the scouting and, and, and coaching opportunities I've had. And just, just, again, believing in me, helping me believe in myself. And uh, his, his insatiable will to win, he, he put in me too. And that helped me help my drive and be more successful. I uh, uh, also wanted to uh, thank uh, my track coach, Larry Cox, who couldn't be here with us tonight. But I hated to see Larry coming in the, in the cafeteria. I did not want to run track. I wanted to play basketball, and I didn't want to do anything else. And, uh, and Larry, he was slick. He went to Coach Smith and said, uh, and got Coach Smith to get me out to run track. And that's how I, that's how I ended up running track. Um, and you know, Larry, I'd see Larry sometimes, and he bragged to all of his um, his football players about how he had a high seven foot high jumper on his track team, and he was a college all American, and he taught me everything he knew. But what Larry failed to tell people was, it only took about 15 or 20 seconds. He said, "Go run, jump over that bar with that little thingy," and that was it. So he really didn't teach me a whole lot, but he tells everybody he did. Um, you know, and uh, Coach Smith, you know, he, um, you know, never sell yourself short. And that was one thing 
uh, that's really stuck with me all over the, that all these years. Never sell yourself short. And I look at some of the things that you know that I've done, and and um, had I sold myself short and not run track after my um, my knee surgery, uh, January of my senior year. You know, I would have sold myself short. Yeah, maybe I would have been okay going to the Army and being a dentist. And that was, that was the plan. That's what I was going to do. I said, I'm, I'm just not going to do it. Uh, but, you know, talking to Coach Smith and, and uh, Coach Taylor, you know, changed my mind and got me back out there on the track. And um, I really thank those guys for it. Um, you know, there were countless others. I mean, countless. Uh, Diana Barriker and uh, Dave Churchman, my two favorite teachers in all the world. Um, uh, Larry Wood, he was a basketball coach for me. Uh, Wally Vickers, uh, Dennis Malone, uh, Jim Brown, uh, Tim Reed, um, JR. JR helped me through my knee surgery, rehabbing, getting me back to where I needed to be so I could run track my senior year. Uh, my goodness, I tell you, I don't know. Without JR, I don't know if I would even be here tonight, you know, up here in front of you. So uh, his help was, was very uh, instrumental. Uh, you know, Tom Alf, uh, going back some time, but another guy who was a great guy by the name of Jerry Grammel. Um, oh, my goodness. That guy, he was something else. And a, a, another, another instrumental teacher uh, in my life. And, and, and that's what it was. I mean, I spent the last 18 years in education helping kids to give them an opportunity, uh, just giving back because so many people gave to me. And that's what I wanted to do for, for the youth for my life. And that's what it was. I, I dedicated my life to serving kids, and that's what I want to do. Um, the last people that I want to thank tonight, and I would not be the man I am today is without my parents. Uh, my father is ill and uh, not able to be here with us tonight, but uh, my mother is. And I will tell you, um, without her love and support, uh, there, there's no way. There, there's no way I could be here. Uh, she taught me what it means to work hard and sacrifice. And um, uh, growing up in a single parent household, you know, I saw her go to work early come home late, work the holidays and weekends at the old empty lot that used to be Mercy Hospital. And, um, you know, it was a struggle. It was a struggle, but, you know, I knew that if, if I could, you know, I knew life wouldn't be easy and there would be sacrifices and struggles. And, uh, but if I remember family, <coughs> I kept my nose clean, uh, I could do whatever I wanted to do. So tonight for me, my name is on that award, but it's for my mama too. Thank you, mama. Awesome. Great job, Eric, and thank you for reminding us of why we're all here. It's because of somebody else and their efforts. Excellent job, excellent job. Next up is Brian Jackson, class of 1984. He earned three varsity letters in soccer and was team captain in his senior year in which the Big Blue boasted a 12-4 record, including an 11-3 Greater Miami Conference record. He was named to the team's MVP, named first team All-GMC, and second team All-City in Cincinnati, and played in the East-West All-Star Game in Cincinnati. He also played in the North-South uh, Dayton versus Cincinnati All-Star Game. Jackson earned two varsity letters in baseball and was a starter and a key contributor in the 1983 state championship baseball team coached by fellow Hall of Famer Dan Bowling. In his senior year, Jackson led the team with the highest batting average and was named first team all GMC and all greater Cincinnati. The Big Blue also won the GMC for the third straight year. One of his classmates and teammates was fellow Hall of Famer Dan Hartlib. He went on to Northern Kentucky University to play baseball, where he set a number of hitting records, some of which he is, is still in the top 10 list. Jackson was named All-Conference for two years, All-Region for two years, and All-American for one year. 
He was named Division II All-American in baseball his senior year at Northern Kentucky University. Jackson was also named MVP of the World Championship team while playing a club baseball with the Storm Club in Cincinnati. Brian Jackson, class of 1983, 84. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to congratulate all the other Hall of Fame inductees tonight and for those in the past that was able to uh, be inducted as well. I want to say thank you to my brother, Curtis, who's in attendance here, um, for secretly, secretively nominating for this. I had no idea, so I was very surprised when JR called me. Um, and a big thank you to the committee for the acceptance of um, allowing me into this Hall of Fame. I would like to, first of all, thank my family. If I could have my, my mother and fa father stand up, please. Just want them to be recognized. Thank you for everything you've done. Also in attendance is my brother, Curtis, my sister, Krista, my wife, Sandy, my two daughters, Brooke and Lauren, as well as coaches and friends that are also here tonight. It is a great honor and pleasure to be inducted in this Hall of Fame. I would like to take a few minutes now to talk about how, how I've been blessed throughout my life. I really like that word. First and foremost, I'd like to thank my Heavenly Father for blessing me with the family, the friends, the teammates, and coaches. The Lord blessed me with good hand-eye coordination, and he kept me injury-free throughout my career. He also provided me favor throughout my whole life, both high school, college, and even into my career. So I want to thank him first and foremost. I was blessed to have a dad who was always my coach as I was, as I was a child growing up. He had that knack of pushing me to be the best that I could be, but also helping me to understand that winning or losing, it's okay. Go out and fight, give it all you got, but in the end, it's okay. You know, life still goes on, it's just a game. I had a mother and a sister that were my, my biggest fans. I couldn't do anything wrong. Even if I struck out, bases loaded, coach, at times, they were always there to say, good job. So I thank you for always being there and supporting me. I'm also blessed to have a brother that, that was two years older than me. He kind of paved the path for me. Um, I followed him in soccer. Um, played, he played baseball as well at Hamilton. We had a lot of competitive days, but it was all good. He really taught me a lot having that brother that was two years older than me. I was able to play three years of varsity soccer and participate in two all-star games during that time. I was able to play three years with by far the best high school coach ever, Mr. Dan Bowling, who is here tonight. Thank you for your leadership, your guidance, and I didn't remember this, but I'm glad he told me tonight. He said, when I was a sophomore, I was playing basketball, baseball, and soccer. He told me tonight when I was a sophomore, I went to him and said, I, I need to give up one sport, and I think it's going to be baseball. And, and I don't remember that, but I'm so glad that you kept me going with baseball, so thank you. As a junior, I had the highest batting average and played second base on the 1983 state championship team. Joey Lewis is here tonight. He was shortstop. We were a pretty good up the middle combination. <laughs> and by far, that was the best team I've ever played on in my life. We, we were, as we said in the 80s, we were awesome. <laughs> and, and we were voted the second best team in America that year, at the end of the year. So that was amazing ride that we had that whole year. I even was able, during, at the end of that game, I fielded the, the last out of that game. And as that ball came to me, I looked back at it and I'm like, it looked like a little pee coming at me. 
because I had to field it and throw it to first base for the, for the last out of the game, and um, we got it. So it was, it was an awesome memory. Uh, 1984, I was able to lead uh, MVP and captain of a summer baseball team in Cincinnati, and we won the national title. Some of you might remember uh, these names, but we beat a team from Houston, Texas. Um, on that team, we um, beat um, Greg Swindell as the left-handed pitcher who went on to be a um, major league player, and Chuck Knobloch. I think he was still throwing him pretty high at first base even back then with his arm, <laughs> if you remember that. Um, <clears throat> and like you said, I had a good career at NKU. Um, and kind of another story, I was thinking about um, Dan, Dan Bowling came to me and said, I've got a, a good coach um, at Arizona State. He would like for you to come out and consider going to Arizona State, but I know it's a really far away from Hamilton, Ohio. Um, so I, I thought about it, so let me think about it. Um, you know, being tight with my family and probably the farthest I had been maybe was Cincinnati. I kind of thought, mm, I can't go all the way out west. So I, I passed on that, went to NKU, and I was able to play there um, all four years. And like you said, I, I still hold top 10 uh, lists there in hits, batting average, run score, slugging percentage, stolen bases, and walks. So, you know, I think just kind of going to a smaller school for me was right. It was an hour away to get back and forth to home where I needed to be. And um, I obviously met my beautiful wife at college, who's here tonight, and I wouldn't be here today um, without all of those memories. Last but not least, in closing, I just want to thank everybody for being here, and go Big Blue. Great job. Outstanding job, Brian, thank you very much. Next is Gordon Kraft, class of 1939. Gordon Kraft graduated from Hamilton High School in 1939. He was a member of the basketball team coached by fellow Hall of Famer James Hall. He was a member of Big Blue's state semifinalist basketball team in 1938. He also was a diver on the Big Blue swim team. He won the city's junior diving championship and the Southwestern Ohio Trophy in 1938 and 1939. He was also Ohio State champion in 1939 in diving. He was the owner of Clark's Sporting Goods and built a relationship with the county high school sports program for over 50 years. He teamed with E.T. E. Karsh in 1953 to start the West Side Little League baseball program. Some of you may know about that. And then started the West Side Babe Ruth Baseball League in 1954. A noted basketball official, he served for 10 years as secretary of the Butler County Officials Association. Kraft is a member of the Butler County Softball Hall of Fame as well as the Butler County Athletic Hall of Fame. Tonight his son Gary Kraft will be talking on behalf of his father Gordon. First, I also would like to congratulate the nine inductees to the 18th Hall of Hamilton High School Hall of Fame. It's kind of humbling to stand among you and celebrate your remarkable athletic careers and life accomplishments, but it also leads to the credibility of the Hamilton High School athletic program. <clears throat> to the Hall of Fame committee, thank you for my late father, his wife Jean, and the Kraft family. We are very grateful for your acknowledging Gordon Kraft and his enshrinement and the accomplishments to the history walls of the Big Blue and the Hamilton High School hallways. Dad was born and raised in Hamilton. He succumbed to a brain tumor and Alzheimer's disease in 1997. He battled for seven years, not willing to give up the game of life, knowing it was a game we all eventually lose. He played life's game to the bitter end and gave his best effort until the final buzzer. In 1939, he got a job as a student co-op with Cullen Sporting Goods, which was in downtown Hamilton at the time. A career was born out of his determination 
to retain and continue his high school sports involvement and successes. Upon re returning home to Hamilton in 1945 after serving four years in the U.S. Army Air Force as a physical instructor in Pebble, Colorado, he found employment at C.A. Clark and Sons Sporting Goods and eventually became the owner and proprietor. They say to be successful in a career, do something that you love, and Dad certainly accomplished that. Dad's goal at Clark's was to make athletics and recreational sports part of the student education in the Hamilton Public School System. Dad believed Clark's was not only the opportunity to provide for his family, but as important to him was a way to provide for his hometown the affordable experience of sports, athletics, and recreation. That was especially true if it was a part of some youngsters formidable and educational years. He thought that while growing up in Hamilton and attending Hamilton Public Schools, every student should have the opportunity and the experience and, the <clears throat> and learning process of being a team member and organized or club sports. Whether it be in the band, theater, or other physical recreation, that the value of extracurricular activities provided the learning experience and camaraderie, sportsmanship, and fair play, and that these sharings were important in life, period. I think if Dad were making his acceptance speech, he would certainly thank you, but not so much for the accomplishments and acknowledgments of his personal athletic career at Big Blue, but for the fact that Hamilton Public School System had allowed him the opportunity of experiencing athletics as part of his education and upbringing in Hamilton. <clears throat> that his development by devoted administrators, teachers, and coaches gave him the preparedness for his career and his future and taught him the purpose should be to pass these experiences forward. Sports became the makeup of his life's work, provided for his family, and was the cause of lifelong friendships and fulfilling a very happy life. Again, I thank the Hall Committee and all of you who shared your sports life with Dad and the Kraft family at Clark's. It was truly Dad's pleasure and the family's pleasure to have shared part of your lives through sports and Clark Sporting Goods. Thank you. Thank you. Got another one there. You you're fine. You're fine. You represented your father very well tonight. Great job. Next up is Katie Halcom Luff, class of 2003. Katie earned four letters in softball for head coach Steve Heckman and two varsity letters on the Big Blue golf team. She was a premier pitcher for Hamilton High girls fast pitch softball team from the years 2000 to 2003 with a career record of 71 and 33. She helped guide the Big Blue to the state runners up in 2001 and the final four in 2002 and regional runners up in 2003. Katie was named a first team all greater Miami conference in 2002 and 2003 and when GMC's player of the year in 2002. She was named first team All Ohio in 2002 and second team All Ohio in 2003. She was voted Cincinnati Enquirer's Player of the Year in 2001. She was voted Hamilton High School's MVP in 2001, 2002, and 2003 while pitching 30 shutouts, four no hitters, and a career ERA of an amazing 1.02. In her senior year of high school, she was voted by the other coaches of Hamilton High School as an Outstanding Female Athlete of the Year. Katie attended the University of Rhode Island where she was named the team's MVP in 2006. In 2007, she played professional softball in Germany, and I'm not going to try to say that, so we're just going to say nightmares, <laughs> and helped the team qualify for the Nationals for the first time ever. Katie, class of 2003. Hi. Um, okay. First of all, I want to thank my parents. Um, I could never have done anything that I've ever done without them. 
um, starting out at what, four or five years old, uh, taking my sisters, my brother and I, all across the country, one corner to the next, depending on the weekend, whatever sport we were playing. Uh, I can't imagine how much money they spent on traveling and lessons. And uh, wow, we had so much fun doing all of that. And I, I, I have no idea that anybody else could have better parents than I did growing up. And even as an adult, um, the support that they've given me through the best times of my life and the worst times of my life. And my parents are over here. My mom rocked my son to sleep. He's here tonight. My son, Aiden, he's awesome. Um, my little brother, he got dragged along for everything too. He's a good sport and he bonded with everybody. Um, and my best friend, Bridget, over there, uh, she's recording me. <laughs> she was my teammate, um, you know, we had a great time. And Coach Heckman right there, um, who I've known since I was, I don't know, six or seven. He coached both my older sisters uh, all through high school. He coached me and now after, after going through some things, he got me out of my house to let me coach with him. So, you know, I've been with him for the past three years. Um, I'm gonna have my fourth season with him this year. And he's not only just an amazing coach, you know, to my sisters, uh, he's a family friend and he's a good friend of mine now. Um, you know, he, he let me do what I needed to do in softball. Uh, he didn't really take on a whole lot of the pitching stuff, so he just, do you need to practice today? You know, what are you going to do? <laughs> so he was really good about that. I'm like, no, today I'm going to just, I'm not going to pitch today. Um, you know, we'll hit or something. <laughs> so we always really good with that. Um, I, um, you know, I, I had some great teams all throughout my life. Um, <sighs> great support all around. Um, so I'm very, very thankful for this honor. Um, and congratulations to everybody here. Uh, I don't even feel like I compare at all to some of the things I've heard tonight. Uh, some great people up here. So, am I leaving anything out, Mom? <laughs> oh, I have, I, yeah, my, my two older sisters. I, I grew up, I, I really looked up to them. Both great softball players. Um, also basketball, volleyball. Um, you know, I wanted to be just like them. And, you know, and I got that, I got that opportunity to even play with them. So that was great. Um, and I promised uh, my friend Clint I'd give him a shout out. <laughs> so yeah, thanks to my family, thanks to Heckman, you know, thank you so much, and thanks to everybody here. And that's it. Incredible job, Katie. <laughs> she was so nervous, but you did an awesome job. Unless you were a teacher or the parent, of this gentleman next, you maybe didn't know that this was his first name because we always knew him as Tez, but Wartez Morris, class of 2001. Here in three letters in football under head coach and fellow Hall of Famer Ed Mennery. As captain his senior year, Morris was voted first team all GMC, first team all Southwest Ohio, first team all Cincinnati, and third team all Ohio. First team all county and also selected to the all dream team by the Southwestern Ohio Coaches Association. He started as a defensive back in his sophomore year and started as a defensive outside linebacker for two years. He was a running back for two years. He averaged over 11 tackles per game his final season, compiling 116 stops. He also had four caused fumbles and one interception and one fumble recovery. Morris also played three years of high school basketball under coaches Tim Reed and head coach and fellow Hall of Famer Larry Allen. He earned three letters for track as well under coaches and fellow Hall of Famers Eric Higgins and Skip Taylor. Morris went on to the University of Pittsburgh where he was a four-year letterman as a defensive back. He started all 13 games his freshman year as a free safety and was ranked second on the team with 119 tackles, including 17 tackles and a win over the University of Florida. Gators who? Right. <laughs> he was named to the Sporting News Big East All-Freshman Team and was named the recipient of the Ed Conway Award, annually presented to the team's most improved player. Heading to the 2005 football season, Morris had 35 career starts, the most of any Pittsburgh player. Tez Morris, class of 2001. 
I'm good. I'm good. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, first off, I like to thank God, definitely, for for continuing to bless me, my past and present. I like to thank my mother. Could you please stand? You got a beautiful outfit on, man. Yes, sir. I'd like to thank my mother for being my mother and father. A lot of you may not know, being a single mother, being a single family household, I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's hard. It is hard. It took me to get to where I am today to appreciate all the things she did for me and continue to do for me, should I say. So I just want to thank you. Thank you. I want to thank Ms. Ville, my future mother-in-law, for holding me accountable, keeping me accountable for everything I have done. My lady. For, for blessing me with my four beautiful children, my sister for being there for everything and believing in me. That's off the field things. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot of thank yous. It's a lot of thank yous I have to give. Uh, Miss Trick, Debbie Trick, and Andrea Joyce, special teachers. I had a lot of special teachers in my life that helped me get to this place I am now. A lot of special teachers. Definitely don't get to to be up here in front of you just off of football. <laughs> a lot of it starts at home. A lot of it definitely starts in the classroom. So I just want to thank those people, coaches, Coach Minnery. <sighs> ah, I can stand up here all day. Like you said, you're a hell of a car salesman. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, and I love you for that. I love you for everything you did for me, everything. All the tradition you put, it, put in me and, and helped me be successful as I was, so thank you. Thank all the coaches. Uh, Coach Allen, I appreciate everything you've done for me. Everything. Coach Higgins, I, I can go around the room. It's just, uh, I'll be up here all night. But you all know I, I'm not really, uh, <laughs> I'm not the biggest talker. I'm not the biggest talker. But uh, I'm definitely grateful. I'm grateful to be a part of everything. I'm grateful to be up here in front of you guys. Man, thank you. Thank you. Great job. Great job, Tez. Excellent. Next up, we have Angela Tolbert, class of 2000, sharing three letters in girls basketball, playing one year under head coach Dan Brandenburg and two years for head coach Dave Churchman. In her sophomore year, she won rebounding award and academic certificate for a 3.4 grade point average. And I will mention all greater Miami Conference. She also set the school record with a field goal percentage of 59.8%, going 91 for 152 shots and scoring a total of 222 points for the season. In her junior year, Tolbert led the GMC in scoring with 18.5 points per game and an av game average, and 349 points for the year. She won the best offense and rebounding award for the third year in a row, and also academic certificate for three years. She was voted to the first team all GMC for the second time. She was named all Butler County for three years and was a Cincinnati Enquirer's player of the week two different times. Tolbert scored 444, 43 points in her senior year to bring her career total of 1,014, placing her second on the all-time scoring list for Hamilton High's girls basketball. After graduation, Tolbert attended Southern Illinois University, where she was called a pure shooter, has a natural ability to slash to the basket and score and rebound, and has the ability to be a solid player defensively. Angela Tolbert, class of 2000. Hello. First of all, I want to thank the Hall of Fame committee for inducting me. Most of all, I want to thank God for blessing me with this talent, because no one gave it to me. It was a blessing. And I want to thank my family 
my brother Ray for roughing me up and allowing me to play in the backyard with the neighborhood boys. <laughs> my twin, Angeline, for um, following me. We're so close. If anybody's seen us out, you've seen me and her. Um, my mom and my dad for traveling with me to and from, from games and AAU and you know, anything that has anything to do with sports. And my son, Khalil, is here. And I'm pushing him to get where, I, you know, I've been and to go further than where I've been. And I might yell, I might fuss, but I do it for a reason. That's right. And I just want to thank everybody for inducting me and all the inductees tonight. And my coach, um, Churchman, for pushing me and yelling <laughs> and running me. I want to thank um, Tim Taylor for our conversations, for his wisdom, you know, just being there for me. Larry Woods and all the other teachers and coaches that follow me and people that look, you know, up to me. And that's really all I have to say. Great job. Thank you. Great job. Wow. Incredible job, Angela. Thank you so much. Last tonight, but definitely not least, completely warms my heart to announce the next person who was just so integral to Hamilton High Athletics. And it's just an honor to read this at this time. Marsha White, Athletic Secretary. Her career with Hamilton City School District in August of 1984 started as a library clerk at Hamilton High School. In October of 1986, she was promoted to secretary to assistant principal, serving as secretary to the athletic department. In November of 2002, her job was reclassified to secretary to department head. She served 29 years in the district with 27 years devoted to the athletic department. In her time in the athletic office, she worked for four athletic directors, John Pont, Mike Delapino, and fellow Hall of Famers Larry Wood and John Ross. She was the heart and soul of the athletic department. White was a fixture to the people who knew her, not only in Hamilton, but throughout the Greater Miami Conference. Former athletic director Mike Delapino said it very well, calling Marcia the driving force of the athletic office, going above the call of duty and often working 15 hour days, first in the office and then selling tickets at sporting events. He said he couldn't call her, he said he couldn't call her a sports fan, but rather she was a fan of the school and the students. Former athletic director Larry Wood said about Marcia, she was very dedicated to the athletic department and the school system. She will be thoroughly missed by all. And to represent her tonight is her daughter, Chris Allen. Thank you, everyone. Sorry. On behalf of my mother, Marcia White, I thank the committee for this great honor. She would feel it was unnecessary to be recognized for just doing her job. And I know she would be humbled. She was always one helping planning these banquets, and she never would have dreamt she would one day be a recipient at one. She unexpectedly passed away March 31st, 2013, through complications from open heart surgery, so her death was a great shock to us all. Though my mother wasn't herself a Hamilton High graduate, she graduated from Fairfield in 1964. My brother and I were. I graduated in 1988, I was a classmate of Bobby Barnett, and my brother Carrie graduated in 1994. She was a fixture in the Hamilton High Athletic Office, and her presence is missed every day. She touched so many lives at the school, more than I think she realized. When news of her passing got around, there was shock and disbelief all over the community, not just Hamilton High. She worked with wonderful athletic directors, such as Mr. Wood and JR, and Mr. Delapina and Mr. Pont. 
She gave much of her time to making sure everything was done before an athletic event or a banquet. I knew that during football and soccer season, I wouldn't see much of my mom because she was always at the school, a lot of games, <laughs> a lot of preparation for those events. She was involved in pretty much every aspect of Big Blue sports. She truly devoted herself to the old Big Blue. Thank you again for this great honor. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you. Chris, you did an outstanding job. What an honor it was to honor her. And she will continue to be honored with all that she has done for the Hamilton Athletic Department. No question. As we come to a close tonight, and we've had such an incredible evening of honoring an outstanding history of athletics, I've been getting incredible and honored to do this tonight. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you to the powers that be to giving me this opportunity. I want to leave you with, a, as I like to call them, a couple of nuggets. There's two things I want to say in our departure. And one is in regard to a bridge. I know that Cincinnati has been in a bit of a whirl about a particular bridge lately. And that's going to continue to be a debate on how they're going to fund that. And I begin to ask the question, why is it such a big deal? Because that bridge is essential to its city. It allows for people to transfer goods and resources and people to visit the city and to travel on a major highway. And in thinking about that, I thought about us tonight. I thought about the athletes that are in this room that have been inducted, the athletes, the former athletes. I like to refer to myself as a former athlete. All I do now is play softball. It don't really count. Just kidding to all the softball players out there. But we've been given something, and it's been said by several people tonight in such a very special way. They said it was a gift. The thing about a gift is a true gift giver who receives a gift, he continues to give that gift. So it's been noted a couple of times tonight as to whom we've received that gift from, and I believe with all of my heart that it wasn't through some accident, but it was given by a loving and heavenly Father. But having said that, this bridge that I'm referencing is sports. Something that we can all share, something that we can all come to love and know, no matter what the sport is. Everyone here who's been inducted, you've been given an opportunity to share that gift. And it is a bridge to other people. So I want to challenge you that this sport, this bridge, this thing that can connect you with others, what will you do with it? And how will you change the world? The next thing that I want to share in our departure tonight it has been mentioned by every single person tonight. We've mentioned a coach. It's warmed my heart as I've looked out throughout the crowd and I've identified at least eight different coaches that have impacted my life. A coach molds us. A coach, a really good coach, speaks things into existence before it even happens. God created the heavens and the earth by the things that came out of his mouth. His word says that you and I are created in his image. Therefore, the words that we speak create the universe that is around us. And if all of us can understand that to the level of the truth, we can create an incredible universe within our lives and the lives around us. But I do want to close our time in the way that we started it. By giving honor where honor should be due. And that is in the greatest coach, the first coach, our gracious and loving Heavenly Father. So I'm going to ask you to join me in prayer. Father God, Lord, through your Son, Jesus Christ, what an honor and a privilege that it is to stand here before these incredible people in this outstanding city. I believe a city of hope, a city that is destined for even greater days. Lord, I thank you for the inductees tonight. I thank you for everyone who has planned this evening. Lord, I thank you for all that you have done and you've created all of us. And we're so grateful for that. And we're going to live to the fullest 
We are going to bridge the gap and connect with others through the gifts that we've been given to give it to others. And Lord, we're also going to realize that you're the greatest coach and you're continuing to create with your words and you're continuing to speak into us things that have not even happened yet. But I'm going to believe we're going to line up. Lord, I ask that you protect everyone here tonight on their way home. Be with us, protect us, and we'll give you all the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we're done, I want you to give the biggest round of applause for all of our inductees tonight. God bless you, and thank you.